All right, chapter five. Remember, she was cleaning those erasers. Miss Sims was not happy with her. Well, there I was, me, and about 500 grubby erasers. Well, maybe not 500, but it sure felt like 500. And I want to see every eraser clean as a whistle by the time I get back, Miss Sims said, looking over the top of her glasses. No excuses. What about my lunch? I asked. You may eat your lunch at your desk, I, she said. I was about to say I didn't bring my lunch. I thought maybe I could tell Miss Sims I had to buy lunch in the cafeteria, but then I realized I didn't have any money to buy school lunch with. I was just going to have to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich my mother made for me. Miss Sims walked out the door. She said she was going to the teacher's lounge to calm her nerves. I sat down at my desk and I got out my lunch. I wished I had something to read. I always like to read a book when I eat by myself. It keeps me from getting bored, but the grown up book I had from the library was at home. It's a mystery written by a lady named Agatha Christie. It was the first grown up mystery I'd ever read. I really liked it. There were a lot, of, a lot more books by her in the library. I couldn't wait to read them all. Anyway, just as I was biting into my sandwich and wishing I had someone to talk to, Susie Alton came running through the door. She was someone to talk to, sort of, but someone else would have been a lot better. What's wrong, asked Susie. Did you do something really bad this time? I never do anything bad, I said with my mouth full. My mother always tells me I shouldn't talk with my mouth full because it's rude. I don't like being rude, but since Susie was rude first, I figured it was okay in this case. Then why are you eating lunch in the classroom, she said. My knee hurts too much to walk on it, I said. What happened, she asked. She, she, she had her hands on her hips and her head tilted way to the side. She looked like a parakeet. I bet her mother does that all the time and that's why she does it. Did you fall off Mount Everest on a hiking trip or something? No, I said, swallowing another mouthful. I hurt my knee in a car accident in France last summer. Every now and then it bothers me. <laughs> I bet, said Su Susie with a sniff. So what are you doing in the classroom during lunch? I asked. I thought kids weren't allowed in here without teacher's permission. Miss Anderson gave me permission, Susie said in her snootiest voice. I left my mon lunch money in my backpack. That sounds like a story to me, I said in my snootiest voice. Well, it isn't, said Susie. She stomped over to my desk and reached into her back. She stomped over to her desk and reached into her backpack. Susie's desk is next to mine. As she unzipped the backpack, a little book fell out onto the floor. It opened to pages with a drawing on it. The drawing was a baby chewing a rattle. Susie didn't notice it fall on falling. So I reached down and picked it up. There were lots of drawings of babies. There were a couple drawings of a dog too. Suddenly, Susie saw me looking at it. Hey, she said, snatching it from me. Give that back, it's mine. What is it, I asked. It's my sketchbook, Susie said, turning red. Now you're making up a story, I said with a sniff. You probably took it from somebody. I did not, I, she said loudly, but she stuffed it back in her backpack. You can't draw that well, I said. I bet she couldn't draw a picture. I bet you couldn't draw a picture as good as this if you had art lessons for 90 years. The drawings were really, really good. They were almost like photographs. That's how I knew she was making up a story. Who cares what you think, she said. They are pictures of my little brother. I never, I've never heard you say anything about a little brother, I said, taking about a, a bite of my sandwich. You don't even have a little brother. I do too, she yelled, turning redder. My dad and his wife just had a new baby. Right, I said, and this is their dog, I suppose. Yes, it is, she said, looking really mad. If you can draw pictures this good, how come you never draw in class? There's never, there's nothing good to draw in class, Susie said. That was true, but still sounded like a story to me. 
I say, you took it from somebody, I said, but who cares? Susie just gave me a snooty, red-faced look. I bet she was red-faced because she was making up a dumber story than I, than even I have ever made up. Who cares whether you believe me or not, she said loudly. Then I left with her, then she left with her lunch money. I was glad to be by myself. Being alone is better than being with Susie Alton any day. I figured I had better hurry up and eat or else. I would never get to the erasers. But just as I finished my box of juice, Miss Sims came back into the room. Uh-oh, I thought. Now I'm really in for it. I haven't finished them yet, I said. Miss Sims wasn't even looking. I have homework papers to go over, said Miss Sims. Besides, I wanted to have a little talk with you anyway. Double uh-oh, I thought. I have noticed that whenever a grown-up wants to Pardon have a interruption talk. for afternoon announcements. At this time, bus 180, bus 216, bus 212, and bus 172 are dismissed. This wasn't a very good time for me to read this book. It was never a good thing. I have also noticed the best way to handle a little talk is to not talk at all. But that only works if the grown-up doesn't ask you any questions. All right, let's finish this chapter. So, of course, that was the first thing Miss Sims did. Can you just tell me the real reason why you aren't doing your homework, Babette? Said Miss Sims. She sat at her desk and got comfortable. She folded her hands in front of her and got that. I'll just wait until you're ready to tell me the truth look on her face. I could see there was no point in telling her any stories. She probably wouldn't like them anyway. It's boring, I said. Boring, said Miss Sims. Why did you think that? After all, teachers and parents work very hard to make things interesting for their students. I know, I said, but everything is still boring. Sometimes in life, people have to do things they don't like, said Miss Sims. Just because something is dull doesn't mean that you can't simply that you can simply refuse to do it. I know, I said. I could feel a long lecture coming on. Are there any special problems at home? Miss Sims asked. Is there something happening between your parents that you don't want to talk about? Is that the reason you don't do your homework? I tried to think if there was anything I could say, but there wasn't. Things at home were just fine. Everything is okay, I said. I just get bored at school. The work isn't that interesting. Everyone gets bored with work, said Miss Sims. Even I get bored with work. Some days I would much rather play tennis or sail a boat, but I come to school every day and do my job anyway. That was pretty surprising. It never crossed my mind that teachers would rather do something else besides teach. I always figured they didn't have anything better to do. Maybe Miss Sims was more exciting than I thought. But it's so hard to keep my mind on school, I said finally. What do you do that's more interesting at home? Asked Miss Sims. Do you watch television? I read books, she said. Or I said, if you like to read, why don't you read what I give you for homework? Asked Miss Sims. Because what you give us to read for homework is really boring, I said. This was not going well. Miss Sims was looking grouchier by the minute. Perhaps you can help me make it more interesting, said Miss Sims. I thought Pepito's Burrow was a very good story. What, what in your opinion, is wrong with it? It isn't that there's anything wrong with the story, Miss Sims, I said. It's just that it's so short. It's also kind of simple, if you know what I mean. Not exactly, she said. You mean the words are too simple for you? That too, I said. But also, Pepito doesn't do much. Nothing happens to him. He just has a little burrow. So what? And what books do you read that are more interesting, said Miss Sims. I just finished a neat book called A High Wind in Jamaica. I said, and now I'm in the middle of a really good mystery by Agatha Christie. It's about a murder on this train called the Orient Express. Nobody can get off the train, 
So the murderer is someplace in there with all the good guys. Miss Sims looked at me as if I had turned into a giant lizard or something. What did you like about a high wind in Jamaica? Asked Miss Sims. I really liked how all the kids were able to drive a whole ship full of pirates. Totally crazy, I said. I liked it when the kids turned out to be tougher than grown-ups. Miss Sims smiled. I liked that book too, she said. Kids are stronger than most adults think they are, aren't they? After that, we talked about all the books I've been reading. It turned out that Miss Sims had read a lot of the same books. It was the weirdest combination conversation I'd ever had with a grown-up. It was so strange that I totally forgot to tell Miss Sims that Susie Alton had taken somebody's drawing book. Not that I'm a tattletale. I just thought it might be a good idea for, to get someone in trouble for a change. Then Miss Sims said the weirdest thing of all. I have a great idea, Babette, she said. Instead of giving you the same homework I give the rest of the class, I'm going to give you something different. Here's where I got into major big trouble, I thought. I scrunched my face up and waited for the bomb to drop. I want you to write a book of your own, she said, Miss Sims. Every night, instead of your usual reading homework, I want you to go home and write a grown-up story that's very, very long. You mean with chapters and everything? Mm. I gulped. Exactly, said Miss Sims. After all, I can tell from the crazy stories you've been telling me all year that you have a wonderful imagination. She said this with a funny, crooked smile. Then the smile got bigger. But I think you should know that it's wrong to make up stories to get out of doing work, she said. So there's another little problem we need to take care of. I wondered why she was smiling. I wasn't smiling at all. Here I had been thinking I was off the hook, but Miss Sims wasn't letting me off at all. She was probably going to make me wiggle a lot more before she was done. I still want to talk to your mother. And soon, Babette, she said. So I'm going to call her for a parent-teacher conference anyway. But I really will do my homework, I said. I did not want my mom to talk to Miss Sims. Don't worry, dear, she said. Your mom won't be angry. That's what she thought. What about the erasers, I asked as the bell rang. Don't worry about them, said Miss Sims. You have a lot of work to do. You can't waste your time cleaning erasers when you have a novel to write. I think there's two more chapters. We'll finish those two on Monday and our Tuesday and Wednesday next week.